Welcome everyone to our <laughs> second uh, part two, uh, validation uh, validation part two, sur survey data says what? I'm waiting for that ding ding that from uh, that uh, television show. <laughs> In any event, um, we are here to introduce uh, a great guest um, and personal friend of ours. Um, this is Dave Benham. And um, without further ado, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna pass the, uh, the, the, the baton over to Tawny and to my, because I am your sidekick, Stu, and, uh, and I'm joined over here by my host, Tawny, and take it away, Tawny. <laughs> Nothing like putting you on the spot this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stu, appreciate that. Well, um, good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us, we're really excited. Um, as Stu said, we have Dave on, I'm gonna let him introduce himself in a second, but uh, but yes, this is part two to a series. First, we've, we've talked about how to gather data, method, methodology, you know, the importance of it, et cetera. And now we're going to actually take a look into what, how to interpret that data. So we're excited. But before we jump into our topic, uh, Dave, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name's Dave Benham. I've been doing Wi-Fi for about 20 years. I'm a CCIE wireless and an Echo How master. Yes. And when Dave started, the beard was like no beard. And then as it right. progressed. And I had hair when I started too. <laughs> awesome. Well, before we actually jump into it today, we are going to launch, as you know, we like our poll questions here. So we are going to start that poll. What is the biggest obstacle preventing you from performing more frequent surveys to validate and collect data? Because, you know, last time it was interesting, some of the conversation in the webinar, a lot of folks were talking about different challenges that they were having. And so one of the things that we want to do is understand those challenges so that we can help, right? Stu, where's my Jeopardy music? <laughs> oh, it's there. <laughs> I was waiting for you to finish your thought. <laughs> uh, you can just turn it off. I'm, it's off. Awesome. I think, is it on? Can you hear it? I think you I can. can. Oh, excellent. All right. Well, with that being said, let's, let's uh, take a look at these results here really quick. Um, so it, a myriad of, of different of different reasons because you know there there are a lot of challenges a lot of you know some wireless teams are not as large as others so physical location is is challenging when you have lots of sites to visit etc so um, thank you folks for uh, for answering that for us um, but let's get into the nitty gritty of why we are here today um, of course come on technology be my friend today there we go um, so what does your data say what is you know survey data it's important we all um, understand the concept validation and data collection is really critical to having insight into what's going on in your network. Uh, but Dave, let's talk about, you know, just in general, your thoughts about analysis. I mean, what, why do you look at survey surveys? I look at survey results or, or analysis results to gauge the performance of my environment and to check when something changes. I want to see how it performed. If I moved a rack or a new wall got built because of an addition. I want to see what, uh, how it changed my RF pattern, but it's mostly just to, to make sure that things are doing what, what I designed them to do. Make mm -hmm. sure RF is where it's supposed to be and not where it's supposed to not be. Yeah. Stu, your thoughts. Stu's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> hit the mute button you know you, you hit it right the nail on the head it, that is actually uh the thing is that you you've done your design you want to know is it working the way it was intended and i think for me one of the challenges is it's great to have all of this data but what do you actually do with it like what do you how do i interpret it what is it supposed to say what is the baseline supposed to be do i actually need to have a plan of action is there something that needs to change and so where do you start so, so Dave, where do you start with analyzing your data? Like I've got all this great data. I have all of this information. What do I do with it? The first thing I always do is look at the requirements, the project requirements, and make sure that they're configured the way that I want them to be for my design, my environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I usually look at the signal strength uh, real quick, just to kind of make sure everything's covered. And then I go right into the network issues page. I find that to be the most valuable kind of one-stop shop to figure out what the health of the environment is and what's wrong with it, if anything. Yeah, I agree. And folks, we are going to look at some real world examples here in just a few minutes. Um, but Stu, your thoughts, where do you start? Because I think the, the thing for me is there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So everyone has a different process. And just because your process is different, I think the biggest thing is if you don't know where to start, 
know what support resources you have, know where to go to get the information because everyone has a different process. Everyone has a different methodology, but it's the, it, it where do you start can be different. Stu, what about you? You know, yeah, so goes through signal strength. Yeah. So I go, I do, I started the signal strength and I'm, I'm looking uh, at my um, issues and uh, it's sorry, my daughter has decided to keep texting while I'm in a <laughs> webinar. <laughs> and um, uh, cause you put on, you put family's favorites, right? So <laughs> they always go on any event. Um, we like to actually, I, I do something similar as Dave as well. I look at my issues and I want to see what mine are doing, but I want to see what everybody else is going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at the, I want to see the makeup of mm -hmm. each of my antennas. And I individually look at each one because I'm, I'm curious to see how the patterns moved around. Mm -hmm. And make yeah. sure that your APs are consistent from one to the next. You don't want APs with real hot power and real cold power next to right. each other. Right, yeah. And that's mm -hmm. when you look deep, in, deep into it and understand, okay, what DBM is it at or milliwatts, right? And, and, and I want to look at a little bit closer to that. I mean, is the antennas functioning mm -hmm. as, as designed? You know, one of the things um, we wanted to know, as 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 Stu and, and Dave and I were working on on the the data, we wanted to know how many folks actually have a documented process. Uh, so we're going to to ask how many of you have a documented process for analyzing survey or assessment data. There, thank you, Stu. That was the new poll question, wasn't it? <laughs> that, was. that was. Okay, look at that. It's almost, oh, we've got lots of people. All keep right. going, keep going, keep yes. going. Come on, right. enter faster, enter. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a quick look at that. Uh, so not a lot of people have a documented process for it. And, and I think that's something that's really interesting because especially in what we do, our, you know, document, 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 take the notes, reporting, document, everything is, is so pressed upon us. But some of the more simple concepts, some of the things that we do like this, analyzing, being able to analyze your data is important. And, but we don't have documented processes for that. So that's something that uh, may be for, for us to think about. Um, but let's actually get into looking at some of the data, right? So Dave, what are we seeing here? So see a lot of green. <laughs> which is great good, right? usually. So that's what I see. I mean, this is obviously the signal strength view and green mm -hmm. is good. Uh, there are some areas that looks like they're a little bit weaker, but overall it's blanketed in coverage. Um, I would always at this point reference the requirements and see what my minimum RSSI is set to mm -hmm. so that I know green is actually good. And where does it fall off? Like mm -hmm. what is gray? And in this, there's no gray. There's nothing below uh, what we'd consider to be acceptable, except for the areas that weren't surveyed. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I notice is a really good walking path. Uh, it looks like mm -hmm. it was an autopilot survey because I see a real granular like curved lines everywhere, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like all the areas, uh, except for a couple that I assume were designated as do not enter areas, uh, were covered, which is good. Um, mm -hmm. I love seeing notes like the high utilization. I like taking notes in my designs as well to uh, mm -hmm. if I notice anything interesting. Uh, sometimes I'll say, video camera, like I, as I'm walking around, I'll see a camera and I want to check back and make sure that that's not a non Wi-Fi 2.4 gig camera mm -hmm. or something along those lines. So if you, so if this was something that, you know, you had, where would you go from here to understand and see what, what would your next step be? My next step would be to look at the requirements, um, mm -hmm. and then go to the network network issues page. Okay. Um, well, before we do that, let's look at what we see with the, in the RTFM. Yes. And so let's look at that. So I'm looking at, I, I see some utilization in some areas. Um, there's a lot of, uh, data rates enabled. Yeah, I do see, uh, 11 B data rates, which is always mm -hmm. concerning uh, that raises eyebrows. I mean, I suppose there might be perfectly good reasons for having them enabled in some environments, but mm -hmm. not, not often. Uh, usually it's an oversight. So seeing, on the data rate screen there, you see one through 216. That's basically all the data rates and one is a 11B rate. Um, I also see that this is either Wi-Fi 4 or Wi-Fi 5. So there's no 11AX for my APs in this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just BGN. Mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at 2.4, obviously. Right. Um, there's a lot of neighboring APs 
as well that, that we should be keeping track of a lot of APs that aren't ours. So on the left column there, those dots, the colored dots mm -hmm. signify that those are the APs that we manage and that we're actively designing for. <laughs> There's more than that that don't have dots that are someone else's APs. So we mm -hmm. definitely need to uh, pay close attention to that. I see some minor interferers, um, some co-channel interference. I mean, it's two four, so it's it's tough to design all that away. But uh, I do see some some issues. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend? So, seeing this, this is the data you got back from your customer. What would what recommendation would you make, or what tweaks would you make on the network to maybe help increase performance? Or First thing like I would do is have a discussion with the customer about the data rates. I think mm -hmm. that's that's a huge factor here. Mm -hmm. I see four SSIDs with one megabit enabled, that's going to start rolling up as far as management overhead goes. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, I would, uh, I would start, I mean, these, the, the other APs don't look like ones that they can probably control sometimes mm -hmm. in large high rise buildings with shared, uh, shared tenants, you can come up with channel plans for your neighboring floors. You can work with your neighbors and say, we'll mm -hmm. use these channels, you use those obviously on two, four, not a lot you can do. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would certainly uh, address the data rates. That would be my first discussion with the, with the customer. Mm -hmm. Stu, what are your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know what? The data rates are definitely something you want to focus on and, under, and ask the question why. And, and like you say, um, when you walk into networks and you see certain things, just understand it. Ask the questions, you know, why was it configured that way? Maybe they didn't know right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, never kind of like, okay, this wrong, 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 right? It's let's understand there might be a device that's specific that they need. Like, um, what is it? Light, those light walls, they mm -hmm. literally need to have those low data rates, to be honest. And it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's ew, really, but that's what, how it works. Right. And mm -hmm. so there may be some reason why. Mm -hmm. So we always kind of have to take it with a grain of salt at first, but then make the recommendations. Yeah. And sometimes when I encounter those devices that, that have, really obscure requirements that can have a detriment to the rest of your environment, look into a, a bridge, a Wi-Fi bridge or something that you could augment that device with, with more modern Wi-Fi and then mm -hmm. allow it to gain connectivity that way. So kind of override the radio that comes with it, plug in ethernet to it, give it a, a more modern Wi-Fi bridge mm -hmm. to overcome some of that. Yeah. So let's look at five, cause we know two, four can be challenging uh, with interferences, but let's look at five. What, what are we seeing in five? Oh, first thing I notice is uh, <laughs> my neighbors have 80 megahertz channels enabled, which I always love to see. Um, <laughs> looks like we're on 40 megahertz. What's that? Yeah, right. Being a good neighbor. Yeah. Um, so they're consuming quite a bit of the spectrum. Um, mm -hmm. We're on 40 megahertz channels. That's fairly typical. A lot of times I'll do 20. It depends on the AP density. Mm -hmm. uh, I also notice that we have Uni2 extended channels enabled. Uh, and what that means is uh, we have a selection of channels enabled generally for higher AP density so that we have more channels, mm -hmm. but there are devices that don't support those channels and you have to be cognizant of that. Make sure that the devices in your environment are aware of and support those channels. The other thing to, to be aware of is that that is um, uh, DFS. So if, if you're near radar and you have any DFS hits, all of those channels that uh, from 52 all the way through 144 are gonna be impacted by that. It does look like somebody's on 144. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, channel 132 has got a lot of density on it. That's what the red means. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the density view, uh, red means that I'm quite frequently seeing signal uh, or seeing RF at that level. So uh, channel high 132. High utilization is starting exactly. to Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Very high utilization on, uh, on channel 132. So it looks like Wi-Fi. I mean, at first glance, that is... I mean, it's zoomed out, but it looks like a Wi-Fi signature. So it's probably a very busy access point, but that's worth looking into as well. Mm -hmm. And it may be, since it's a 40 megahertz channel, you'll see that 136 right next to it, it's paired channel is orange. So it's not quite as busy. So we've got some devices on there that are either operating only with 20 megahertz channels, or perhaps a lot of that's management traffic. Mm -hmm. You so know that's what, that's actually a really good point you bring up, Dave, because when we're looking at the spec, and I don't know if we could zoom in on that one, but it's, that's actually a really good thing is we, we're now seeing, we've got it at 40, maybe those devices aren't capable of doing 40, maybe a lot of them are at 20, right, and we're seeing that high 
yep. individual. And that's what a sidekick really, you know, you know, product placement sidekick. But I mean, you could see where it's actually carving right into that uh, to 132, 136. And one of the things that you can do on the RTFM tool is zoom in with the magnifying glass and get a better look at that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we looked at RTFM. Dave, what would your recommendation be for them for five gigahertz for this? Um, maybe knock on your neighbor's door and tell them to stop using 80 megahertz channels, <laughs> um, <laughs> which may be difficult, right? In yeah, the, yeah, in it's, a, it's an office building. That's rarely weird. possible to make any progress with that, but it's just yeah. it's funny to see it because it's it always happens. Um, uh, again, we've got low data rates enabled too. I didn't mention that, but on five mm -hmm. gigahertz, we're all all the way down to six megabits, and that's a philosophical discussion on whether you get rid of some of the low data rates. It's a different story than with it is with 11b where you definitely want to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, the point about 20 megahertz versus 40 megahertz is valid. Uh, I don't see a lot of traffic on a lot of these APs either. Yeah. Um, the, the spectrum is fairly clean. So I wonder why we're doing uh, Uni2 extended if we don't really need to. I always want to make sure that that uh, my devices support that. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've encountered devices where, or customers where they think their devices can see it and they can't. And then you've got coverage holes anywhere that you have a device that can't use Uni2 Extended and your AP is on Uni2 Extended. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, and just one quick thing um, for specific questions on like what bridge would the recommend be or would be recommended, uh, we will post Dave's Twitter handle. We're volunteering him to answer any <laughs> questions or anything you have. So feel free to reach out to him. We'll, we'll put that up here uh, in a little bit. Um, but let's look at, let's specifically look at, you know, you guys, when we were talking about where do you start and some of those things, where, let's look at network issues, right? Because network issues really kind of gives us a heart of a lot of what's happening. So let's look, take a look at that. Looks pretty right. clean, right? Yeah, looks uh, curiously clean. <laughs> Whenever yeah. I open network issues and I see it, it looked this good, I always think there's a real problem that I'm not seeing. <laughs> and uh <laughs> What that takes my eyes to is my access points at the top. So we are uh -huh. only viewing the RF for the access uh -huh. points that we control. We're not viewing the access or the RF for the entire area. And the entire area is what matters. Wi-Fi does not, is not isolated where you can tell a client only pay attention to these access points. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we have to pay attention to everything. Right. And uh, the other thing that I would look, look at here again is my project requirements. Are they skewed? Uh, I've seen a lot of times from other vendors where they hand me a, an ECHO file and everything's green, 100% pass, it's great. And then you look at the requirements and it allows seven channel overlap, <laughs> seven EPs on the same channel at negative 50, all kinds of crazy stuff to make it look great. People do uh, that? <laughs> so you've got you've to pay attention to that for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing to understand, and we're going to look at that a little more, you know, to your point, my access points only. So for folks, this floor plan is in a high rise building and it's uh, the 14th floor in a building. So it had neighbors on the sides, neighbors on the top and bottom. This is not a standalone structure, right? So we're going to, we're going to look at that in a minute. Um, but you were talking about, um, you see, this is pretty, if, if this was uh, survey data that you were trying to make a recommendation based strictly on this, what would you have any recommendations? Looks pretty darn good based strictly on this page, uh, but it is not the complete story as we talked about. <laughs> and and also we're only looking at five gig as well. Mm -hmm. So my access points and just five gig. And I typically do view this on a single band. I don't like looking at both bands at once because it's, it's just too difficult to keep track of what's going on. So I like mm -hmm. Like you have it here, I like viewing just five or just two, four, uh, but I usually look at this with all APs so that I know what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe there's other APs I can avoid their channels. If I realize my neighbor's APs are all uni one, I can avoid uni one. Mm -hmm. And then my environment is a whole lot cleaner. Well, don't, don't tell the secrets yet, Dave, just wait just a second. But I think to your point, it doesn't tell the whole story. So that's one of the reasons why when we're doing surveys, it's important to look at all the information available, right? So I, one of the first things we saw when we were looking at the RTFM was the low data rates enabled in five gigahertz. We saw the 80, mega, 80 megahertz wide channels could potentially be an issue. We look at this, we don't see any problems, but that's why it's really important to not just look at one thing and say, okay, network issues is great 
great, I'm done and that's it, right? We've got to look at the whole story. So now let's look at what the requirements are specifically for this, um, for this network, for this build. And at first glance, they look pretty sane. They look, mm -hmm. I mean, these are the, like the Ekahau best practices pretty much. Right. Um, I don't see anything that would skew the results. Like I said, I don't see channel interference set to seven where I would allow seven APs on the same channel. Um, mm -hmm. Everything looks really good here. So I don't think it looks clean because of this, uh, but it's always worth double checking this and making sure that it, it isn't skewed somehow. Yeah. And, and so I look at that and I would say, hey, there's no problems and the network is great, right? But yet I'm still getting issues. We still have people who are like, I, I can't connect. I'm having, their, I'm having connectivity issues. Uh, I'm having problems authenticating. So let's look at all the APs. Yeah, and that's the whole story. So mm -hmm. now you notice a, a magenta wash over the whole map <laughs> and uh, that's channel interference. So that means that I have too many APs on mm -hmm. the same channel. And that's very typical. That's the hardest thing to, to design away when you're trying to kind of uh, take an existing design and improve upon it. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. To, and it's the one that I'll spend the most time on is channel interference as well. And, the, and I think just to, to add here, and I think and it's been coming up in the chat here is that we're, we are um, looking at solely five gigahertz on this particular, um, mm -hmm. this plan here. Uh, yes, on two, four, yeah, that's, w that would be a whole other thing, but five gigahertz, what we're really focusing in on here. And uh, that's why we're seeing this. But I mean, this is really important. We're seeing those, all those all access points and how everybody else is playing along, right? Uh, yep. In this whole environment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so... Dave, what would your recommendation be in this? If, if this was something well, it's, that- it's clearly, it's everybody else's problem, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> so, not me. yeah, um, right. no, I think, I think it would be worth looking at the RTFM list uh, some more and seeing perhaps mm -hmm. are, like I mentioned, are my neighbors using a, a group of channels that I could potentially avoid or, or in this case, they're using 80 megahertz. So good luck with that. But Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can do that and you can make your environment look better because your APs may be stepping on their APs and turning this, this pink as well. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's looking at individual APs and looking at the RTFM would be my, my next step. Mm -hmm. Stu, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, it's, um, is I, I want to look at each, each what's, what's having that impact, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want to look at and go in, into depth on that. I want to see if it's, if, how is it really impacting me? Mm -hmm. So look around at those other ones that are on there, those other measured APs, the white ones, I would go in there and figure out, is that what's causing my, my issues and, and overlap, or is it just the neighbors? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to go in depth and look at each into one of those. So I'll get rid of my APs for a minute and look at others and then see yeah. how that's going to play in there. Because most of those, what you'll see as I think we have later is, is that some of those are actually maybe a printer uh, a hotspot. Um, mm -hmm. Someone's brought in a portable, um, you know, uh, you know those little Verizon hotspot deals. They have them in the bag because they want to use that. Maybe they're a contractor for the day or something. And mm -hmm. those are the things you're going to capture, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you could just have an AP that's really loud on the other floor, right? Yeah. That's 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 doing it. Yep. Absolutely. And sometimes there's just nothing you can do. You got to make your environment as good as you can make it and just deal with it. It, it, exactly right is because wi-fi is a shared resource right and yeah. it's not as uh, we're designated to those channels but if you can can help control a bit of that that, that it helps right to mitigate I that would, i would say that in an environment like this if if it was entirely your neighbors causing this problem that's a good reason to go to 20 megahertz channels yourself because you get a better mm -hmm. snr that way you got a smaller window to deal with mm -hmm. uh, and you might get more reliable transmissions the links the data rate the link speed might be slower Mm -hmm. but it'll be faster and more reliable in real world. Yeah. yeah, That's a really good point. Thanks, Dave. Um, so once again, we have another poll question for you guys. We're doing three today, right? Aren't you guys are so lucky. Uh, so last time we had talked about, um, you know, a couple folks doing remote collabs, sending survey data off to someone to analyze how many of you have used Ekahau's remote collab solutions. So let's think about that. Thank you for, for the Jeopardy music, Stu. All right. Let's still getting a lot of answers. So that's really good. 
Uh, let's go ahead and share that result with everybody. So it's interesting. A lot of people don't have that. Um, don't have. Well, me. we can help you with that. We, we absolutely can. There have been a couple of questions in the chat about that. Um, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we will be more than happy to provide that information for you. But I think that's one of the advantages, you know, put on, you know, with my Ekahau hat on literally, right? Uh, the ability, especially um, one, the first question we, our first poll question was about physical limitations or physical location limitations, especially during COVID and being able to travel. So being able to have someone on site collect data and Dave, send it back to you. How valuable is that for you in what you're in, in especially in times right now? It's hugely valuable. Uh, I mean, I've spending, I'm spending a lot more time at home, obviously, like most people are, but I'm reviewing data a lot more. I'm using Ekaho kind of in a different capacity than I normally do this last year. Spent a lot more time reviewing other people's work versus, <clears throat> excuse me, versus getting my own mm -hmm. results. And this collaboration helps a lot with that. Awesome. Thank you. Well, let's jump, jump into to a different example here, right? Uh, so, so, Stu, what are we seeing here? Ah, so this is actually one of my favorite ones. So what you're seeing <laughs> here is we're seeing three APs and we're going to focus in on, on, on 2.4 here just for a second, because I thought this was kind of, kind of cool. So we wanted to see, um, this is a survey of uh, a warehouse. Now um, it could be any warehouse, um, but this one in particular is where um, we were doing a, um, a warehouse that was API on a stick and we're measuring some data. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting is, is what we saw as the, as the result of doing API on a stick, we're also seeing and doing some regular data capture. We're seeing what the current makeup is of the existing environment. And so when we looked at that, we said, okay, well, that's interesting. Here's where the APs are. And you can kind of see where the, the aisleways are, the warehouse aisles, but we're seeing how the APs are on. Now we're seeing all three of them, mm -hmm. right? And as we go along into our next, uh, next uh, slide here, we're going to see that each individual one. So as I, as I go into the next one, you're going to see um, I'm not jumping there yet, Stu. You're not going there yet? Okay. So you're going to see, so what you're seeing is a makeup of all three APs just focused in on these three on this map. Dave, what are your initial thoughts when you see this? Well, there's clearly something going on on the right side. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a big coverage problem on that. And, and um, I don't know, I mean, even, even in the middle, I mean, like between the, the, left and center APs, there are some coverage problems there as well. Mm -hmm. I would say that this is probably an older design. It looks like these are probably ceiling mounted access points with omnis in a warehouse uh, mm -hmm. with narrow narrow aisles. And that's not really the best way to do that anymore. Uh, we've, got, we've got new antennas and new tools can make that better. Um, mm -hmm. But there's even something, something on the right side still, the way that the coverage is real spotty like that. I sense that there's something environmental going on over there. I see a lot of very strange shapes in the coverage pattern and that's, there's no antenna that makes RF look like that. So something is going on over there. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's specifically take a look at them individually. So Dave, right. what are we seeing with these? Well, I see uh, 11B data rates again. So this is a different this customer, a obviously, customer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. but, but there are 11B rates again, and that mm -hmm. always catches my eye. Uh, this AP is doing a really good job of covering the aisle that it's in. It's doing a marginal job of covering the aisles adjacent to it. And that's it. That's as far as this one goes. Um, let's see. Okay. See a lot of SSIDs as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that uh, as uh, we, we talk about the, um, the power as well, right? I mean, it's oh, yeah. uh, right. That's also important. It's just kind of get what was that measured power at the yeah. time. Right? Yeah. So 20 milliwatts is uh, low, averaged mm -hmm. low, I guess, for, for 2.4. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got to remember that's milliwatts, not dB. So right. uh, you get used to looking at dB a lot these days, um, no, the dBm. What, 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 I mean, what, this is a great thing. Is what can we tell from this particular, mm -hmm. uh, like, a generational AP? Like, was, we, can, we can tell a little bit from this data here, like how somewhat new and oldish its AP is. We know it's not too old. I mean, it's got what three three spatial streams, right? Yep. So we know that's actually a, well, I guess, a somewhat. What would you say? Last four years AP or five? Well, uh, it could be even see. older than that. It could still. be that. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we had the thirty six. Yeah. To use it with the three spatial stream client, so you, yeah, mm -hmm. you'd be able to kind of you know, um, you know, see that data, right? And uh, and that kind of helps you kind of understand, okay, the age of the AP in a way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Let's look at uh, let's look at uh, AP number two. Okay, so similar coverage pattern, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit worse, but similar. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing, I mean, it, same data rates. It's at least on a different channel, so that's good. And you can see that by the purple boxes by each APs. Mm -hmm. uh, I do notice, talking about that, that the left and right APs are both on channel 11. We've got three APs, we've got three channels. Why are we not using them? Uh, there could be a good reason for that. There might be something environmental on channel six, but still, that's worth noting and having a discussion about. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, uh, it's just a an average coverage pattern for that design for an Omni up 35 feet in the air in a warehouse. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just not ideal. Yeah. All right. Now let's look at what's happening over on that right side. Yeah. So this is the one that, that interests me the most, and I suspect uh, that there's something different on the shelves or or something. And there could be something wrong with this AP, but I don't I don't think so. I feel like there's probably something interesting on the shelves that's causing the RF to do some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, it's, it's, this one is, the, is it was a really what one that uh, kind of stumped us. And, and when you looked at this, you had to figure out is, 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 is what's, is it the antenna that's malfunctioning? Um, or is it the, um, is it the, um, uh, the, 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 what's on the shelf, right? Um, because when you looked back at the other one, you said, well, it seems to be getting through most of it, right? But in this case here, what we're seeing is this aisle um, is full of um, uh, li liquid. Well, not, not, I wouldn't say water, but thicker liquids, right? So um, could be like a um, gel packs and stuff like that. So we're seeing this is where there's skids floor to ceiling mm -hmm. uh, in there and it's got, and got this kind of makeup. But what was interesting on this is that, that is there was a little bit more to this antenna than met the eye. It's is uh, is not only that it's you think it shouldn't have too much of a problem, but mm -hmm. uh, we were seeing that um, that there, and you'll see in a moment on the next one is that we're we might have something wrong with makeup with the antenna. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I mean it isn't even covering its own aisle here effectively. Right. Uh, yeah. So you can tell that that the liquid or whatever is going mm -hmm. on there is having a dramatic impact on the RF mm -hmm. because. Transmit power wise, these are all 20 milliwatts. So should look fairly similar if everything else is the same. So that's a, so somebody asked a, a good question related to that. So think about a warehouse with no racks, no product, nothing in it, completely empty warehouse, five football fields big. So it's quite a large facility, right? AP is in the middle of the room, 30 feet high. Client is stationary on the floor, hundred feet away. At that time, it sees it at negative 70 dBm, right? At, that's what it's reading now fill it with paper products or another product is are you going to see a change even though there's still unobstructed line of sight dave are would you still see the um yes the same rssi no you'd see very different rssi exactly. the rf absorption properties of the stuff in the room right. is has a huge impact and next week this map here could be the opposite they could move mm -hmm. the liquid to the other end of that i mean uh, that never exactly. happens right like the they never move the gear around but uh yeah, it has a huge impact, so it and, would not be the same. And and that's the thing. So just because something has an unobstructed view does not mean that it's going to have good signal strength. It does not mean it's going to have good connectivity. It's not does not mean that it's going to see uh, and hear the AP at the same level, right? Uh, uh, it, there's a whole number of factors: reflection, refraction, all of that that can impact what's happening with the the connectivity with the device especially these days with mimo mm -hmm. i mean we're relying on some of the bounces to mm -hmm. to actually improve the signal on one end or the other and mm -hmm. those go away when we fill the the place with stuff yeah absolutely all right so let's uh switch gears a little bit on this one and let's look at five gigahertz wow that's perfect <laughs> yeah yeah bravo <laughs> so, so clearly yeah. We've, yeah got some coverage <laughs> problems in five gig here big time Go ahead, Stu. Yeah, no, I was going to say, what do you think of that, right? I mean, <laughs> That's great. Sign me up. The same AP, but now we're looking at this one, but it's not all as it appears to be, right? It's mm -hmm. um, it's now we're looking at something different. Now we're going to look at, um, you know, well, what's, what is it transmitting at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because we, we know that at least for the left two on 2.4, they covered their own aisles perfectly and the adjacent mm -hmm. aisles somewhat, and that's not the case on 5 gig. So we have to figure out why that's the case. And a lot of times it'll be because of RF absorption mm -hmm. uh, or it could be transmit power, like you said. Mm -hmm. So we need to dive into the tool a little bit and see what, what Akahau is reporting the transmit power of these APs. Mm -hmm. 
So a different thought, a different perspective, right? So I would look at what if five gigahertz isn't a requirement for this customer? What if they're utilizing, it's a warehouse facility. What if they're using more older devices, you know, handheld scanners that are stuck on two, four? Would that you could have certainly a be the case. Do, yeah. Mean, would you have a different this, recommendation? This isn't a problem then. Right. Uh, I mean, you're, of course, you're still going to measure both bands just to have the data and make sure that there's not mm -hmm. something crazy going on. But this is not necessarily a concern at that point. Then we can say mm -hmm. you don't have great five gig coverage, but you don't need five gig great five gig coverage. So um, that, that might be okay. But if this yeah. customer ever refreshes their their mobile devices, if they mm -hmm. say they've got one that goes bad and it gets replaced with a newer model and it decides to, to use five gig, that's going to be a huge problem here. So the customer mm -hmm. needs to know if they, if they, uh, if they're going to use five gig mm -hmm. intentionally or not in the future, they need a new design here. Uh, this is not exactly. going to cut it. Exactly. And anytime, yeah. even if this did cut it, any change in requirements <laughs> like that, you should always do a new design or at least revisit your design and make sure that it, it, uh, it matches your requirements. Yes. Oh, requirements, absolutely. requirements, requirements, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It all goes back to that. So it depends on what the, re <laughs> thanks you, Sam. Uh, it depends on what the requirements are based on what the need is, because right now today, there's not a, there may not be a need for it. Maybe tomorrow there will be. And even as to your point, Dave, it's not a rip and replace because AP cell sizes are different. The antenna, the coverage is very, very different. And so even within the same vendor, you go from one model to a newer model, you're still going to see a difference. You're, so it still requires you to go back, look at your new requirements, and then redesign and look at it specifically that way, because you can't just do a rip and replace on that. Yep. All right. So let's look at specifically some of uh, the isolated AP. All right. So first thing that catches my eye is the transmit power. We're all the way down to six milliwatts on five gig. So clearly they're not too worried about five gig here. Uh, yeah. Typically your transmit power would be the same or even a little higher mm -hmm. on five gig, uh, maybe six, six dB higher. Um, and we're in milliwatts again, but very low mm -hmm. transmit power. That explains why it looks so different from two, four, or at least a big part of the reason why it looks so different from two, four. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's, this is not good. <laughs> No, no, and it's and it's like you, you think is like is there is there something really wrong with the antenna or is there something down the aisle right mm -hmm. and you and it's really hard and then it's you, you look at it, it's like okay what is what's happening here right we know there's something definitely wrong with um, yeah the AP on the right is yeah. has got a big problem uh, much bigger than we thought right yes well don't go there yet, Th yet. <laughs> <laughs> man you guys. You're stealing my thunder. Uh, before we before we look at the the bad AP, so we could actually tell that, um, you know, Dave, while attenuation measurements, we talked we just talked about that even if a client device has an obstructed view to the AP, that it's still going to absolutely could potentially see read it differently and have that interference problem. How do you, especially in warehouse environments, what would you recommend for measuring wall attenuation? And I mean, and just attenuation measurements in general. I would use an AP and a sidekick. I mean, I, I would measure the actual walls, stick it mm -hmm. in there and, and go around the other side and measure it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So let's look at the middle one. The middle one seems to have less problems than the other two. Maybe they're clearer aisles. Maybe there's not as much product on those shelves. Well, there's a little bit more transmit power yeah. here. So we're up to yeah. 13, 13 milliwatts on this one. Uh, it's the next step up in power probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's why it looks a little better, but it's still not even covering the aisle that it's in. So it's not able to be effectively used, uh, I mm -hmm. wouldn't guess, on 5 gig. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a good example of Omni, right? It's not this type of Omni. It's not doing what was what's intended. Yeah, and that brings up a good point too. If this thing had a, mm -hmm. a 10 or a 13 dB antenna on it, 13 milliwatts might be crazy high. Yeah. Uh, so that's not taken into account here. That's it's reading that from the beacon frame saying, this is what my transmit power is. But if you've got a high gain antenna on it and they're mm -hmm. external antennas that you got to take, take into account the whole picture, add the, add that gain to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So now let's look at the fun AP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's <laughs> even worse than, than uh, we expected it to look. Right. Um, this transfer power is down again, but this is unusable, essentially. There's a few pockets of coverage, but no way mm -hmm. anyone's using this reliably. So how would you go about understanding what the problem here is? 
I would visualize it first. I mean, my first instinct in a warehouse like this is that mm -hmm. uh, someone on a fork truck smoked this AP and it's hanging sideways or dangling from a cable, something like that, mm -hmm. or knock the antenna down. Uh, maybe you got water intrusion if the roof is leaking, something like that. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with this. This is worse than I'd expect from the other AP on the left side was the same transmit power and it covered a heck of a lot better than this. So mm -hmm. it's either the liquid that Stu talked about or something going on with the antenna. And I'd visually inspect it first, maybe get up there on a, on a lift and measure it, take it apart, replace it with another one and see if it looks better. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just the basic troubleshooting steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know what, you hit it right there. And, uh, and Keith is, 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 uh, I think he's been paying us. I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, you're, you're exactly right. It, the AP is malfunctioning and, and yes, there is some liquid and stuff in those aisles, but it was more than meets the eyes. Right. So not only don't look at the environment, do a little bit more digging. Um, mm -hmm. and this is a really good example of something's wrong with that AP. Mm -hmm. And tools like this help you understand and visualize that mm -hmm. to explain to the customer, here's why, here's wrong. This is why the tickets are in place. It's yeah. just physically, here's the, here's the empirical evidence. Um, I mean, on camera here is like the one thing I know Dave and you is we always look at is uh, antennas, right? Is uh, these can break, like the, it yeah. been twist too hard and they snap and oh well, right? Yeah. Um, or it doesn't yeah. even the, the longer extended, um, uh, uh, tails of, of the AP, you got to be careful, you know, not over tighten. Mm -hmm. And because if you do, it's just, you'll break at some point. And they are durable, yeah. uh, but you never know, right? Or maybe it wasn't actually put in properly. It was, I've seen antennas where they've screwed on, they didn't screw them on half, they're halfway on, or they, they didn't get the threads. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, yeah. right? Yeah. But in this case, the antenna is. Well, we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Stu. Yeah, I was saying in this case here, the antenna is, gonna say, is, is damaged, yeah. But. It, yeah, it's well, and it could be, we're talking about older APs here. Um, it used to be pretty common for APs to have single band leads for their external antennas. So three 2.4 and three five gig leads, somebody yeah. might've reversed them or mixed them up entirely. Uh, you could have five gig transmitting on a two four antenna or vice versa. Um, right. A lot of the antennas were specific and they had to be connected as such. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great thing because on, on certain APs, uh, for example, a 3502, it had three and three. Yep. Mm -hmm. What happens is some folks during upgrades and stuff, they have upgraded from older ones. They would have actually put the 2.4 gig antenna on mm -hmm. a five gig element. Yep. And what the problem is, is that you're, you can't because that antenna was never meant to be dual. It was meant to be 2.4. So you're mm -hmm. going to get a mixed review remixed signal strength right. on that and it's going to look really bad well you get a mixed review too <laughs> a mixed review yeah <laughs> one star rating for you yes. but, but yeah right and so at, at a lot of folks don't understand is that you can't put that antenna on there that's why there are colors on bottom of the antennas on many manufacturers you mean it matters which port you plug it into yes <gasps> say it ain't so Stu. It does. Um, Even on the dual band antennas with dual band APs, it matters. It does. It does matter. Um, always refer to the documentation of the vendor. They will tell yes. you, um, they will list out um, and on these cables, A, B, C, and D, right? And then those A, B, C, and D are there for a reason. Um, they are there to line up to the ports on the access point. Wow. It's like there was a plan or something for it to, mm -hmm. to happen. To Wouldn't that lead into life, a great right? webinar next? For, yeah. <laughs> <We'll talk laughs> <later. laughs> so, so without any more data on this one, it, you know, if, if we had you done the, the survey, if we have the, the actual survey file, right? This would have been a good opportunity to take a picture of the AP and see what's happening in the environment. So Dave, to your point, you're talking about getting line of sight of it, you know, actually seeing it this would be an opportunity in the survey file to take the picture, make some notes, understand there's a leak, there's this, there's whatever to give you that additional insight. But let's say, Dave, that there was nothing visibly wrong with it. What would the recommendation be? I would experiment with different antenna types. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly something needs to change here. So mm -hmm. redesign it for this area because you either need more APs, more power, different antennas, lower mounting position, something's got to change. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you're trying to do here is not working. Yeah, absolutely. Stu, thought? Yeah, I would, uh, I would again, look at the antenna. I would take the, take, take the AP antenna down, uh, get up there on the lift and, uh, and look at it more closely. 
Mm -hmm. um, I mean, highly, highly unlikely that this is a software config issue. Um, hardware's the EP. Um, yeah. The only other I item is, is that um, in some cases, when you're looking at observed on APs, um, mm -hmm. and what I have found with older APs out there is that um, uh, some folks would have left um, no antennas on the other leads and just left only one because they were replacing some other, they said, oh, we got a patch antenna here. It's only got two leads. We only need to use those. I don't need to yep. use uh, C and D. Well, that can be a problem because over time, if the AP is being on for so many years by itself, those leads are turned on and the power is still going to those elements. Um, and it doesn't actually discharge. Now, vis-a-vis -vis new, new APs have a mechanism to, to understand if there's a resistance on the AP, but not in the old style. And you could actually end up damaging your AP over, over time. Mm -hmm. that, I, that I have seen physically is where you throw the antenna on and still didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And folks, we're getting a lot of questions uh, about wall material attenuation, construction materials, what kind of things impact it. The reality is that anything and everything can impact it. And it really depends on what the material is. So you're going to have to be on site or have a really good, you know, if you can't physically be on site, you're going to have to have a really good detailed understanding of what is on mm -hmm. the shelves, what, what the materials are, what the shelves are made of, you know, all of that, because those are inputs that are greatly going to fa factor into uh, your design, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's really important to understand that. Um, Dave, someone did have a question uh, asking you to elaborate a little more on the high gain antennas and how that impacts power. Um, can you elaborate? Yeah, so on um, in most cases, or I shouldn't say in most, in some cases, mm -hmm. the, the beacon frame that's, that's emitted from the access point that includes the transmit power uh, may or may not compensate for whatever's antenna, whatever antenna mm -hmm. is attached to it. So say an internal antenna access point might have a, a three or a four dBi antenna in it. Mm -hmm. And that's compensated for that. It knows that. But an external antenna AP, you, you may not have configured it or the, the, the IT person may not have configured the gain. And you may be transmitting 20 milliwatts through, or let's just stick to dB because that is a little bit easier to understand. But mm -hmm. uh, 20 dB through a 13 dB antenna, then you got to add the two together. You're transmitting a crazy amount of power beyond what you're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. And that isn't reflected here or may not be reflected here. If the gain wasn't configured in the, in the access point or in the controller, uh, it's not going to be included here. And I could say even in some instances that I've seen it not be in the beacon anyway. If you change the gain, it may not change what's sent in the beacon. Uh, so it doesn't know what the transmit power is. Uh, you just got to be mindful of that if you're especially in external antenna situations. Awesome. All right. Well, we're getting close to the top of the hour or the bottom of the hour, however you like to look at it. Um, but the, the, this it's the is top a, of the hour. <laughs> well, you know, because it's the end. So I've had the end. get referred yes. to in a lot yes. of different ways. Um, but absolutely fabulous. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, thanks for having me. There's just especially when it comes to, to survey data. I mean, we haven't even touched on packet analysis and doing PCAPs and all of that. That's a whole separate issue. Um, but, and there's just so much information available. And, and so Dave, any just final thoughts on how to interpret the data? What is important? Any tips, tricks, things that you, that you want to highlight? Just pay attention to your requirements. I've said it a bunch of times through this, make sure that you know, what you're designing for and and like based on the devices, the environment, et cetera, and make mm -hmm. sure your design meets those requirements. Just stick to that. Stu, what about you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, document as much as you can, um, mm -hmm. especially if you're doing these um, remediation to kind of a, uh, as we call it, a, an assessment of the, of the wireless network. Um, in this case here, when you're doing an assessment, document as much as you can leverage the tools, um, take those pictures. Um, and fortunately in this one here, I couldn't share any pictures, but um, is, is get the pictures in there so you understand and have a good explanation. And when you put it into your report, um, that will help you. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think what we talked about is those, those thoughts were have a good um, wireless methodology um, mm -hmm. in your practice. That is the yeah. best place to start. Well, as we talked about the requirements, gathering those requirements, understanding the makeup, and these are things that we cover in our ECSE classes. And I know the CWMP program covers as well is that you, mm -hmm. you want to gather your requirements, understand that, and put that into your project document or methodology. Mm -hmm. And if you have a solid methodology of 
how you're going to go about doing this, you're going to be set up for success. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, you know, my thoughts, one of the things that's really important is to utilize the tools that you have available, right? So while just some folks, you know, we learned don't have some of the Echo House solutions, right? So make sure you're getting this data. Look at your your AP vendor information. Look at uh, the dashboards. Look at the RM. Look at all of those different things to be able to really help you understand. Because if you don't have insight into your network, you're not going to be able to diagnose a problem. Like from the examples that we saw today, there's a number of different things that could have been a problem. There are a number of, of different uh, challenges and frustrations that, that folks have. You know, we looked at the first example, all my access points in the first one looked fantastic. It was great. But as soon as I looked at what was happening, happening with my neighbors, it was horrendous, right? And so same thing when we looked at the second example, 2.4 didn't look as bad, but five gigahertz, there was really big problems. You have to have the insight. So it's not just uh, gathering the data, but then you have to do something with it. You have to understand, you have to have a plan of action. You have to be able to take that and translate it into what do I do next for my network? And so Dave, thanks again for, for joining us. This was absolutely fabulous. Yes. Thank you. Um, thanks you for having are, me. It was a lot of fun. You are an absolute rock star. Uh, for those of you who don't know Dave, you should know him. Uh, please feel free to reach out to him on Twitter. He'd be more than happy to, to answer any questions. Um, but Absolutely. Dave, any final thoughts? I don't really have any final thoughts. I, I, it was fun. I mean, it was a, I'd, uh, I'd like doing Excellent. this. So thank you. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Dave. Stu, what about you? Anything uh, else? I think we, I think we covered it. Um, I, I think as uh, I do want to just say is that we're, uh, we'll, we'll end off this session today. Yeah. And I guess what we'll do is we'll, we'll talk about what's happening next week. <gasps> we, we are we are. ready to do that? Are we ready to say what's happening next week? We Can are. we do that? Oh my goodness. Because notice that this was a part two series in what we're doing, uh -huh. and, and you can kind of see the theme we're going to go on, but we're going to revisit a topic that we talked about um, not too long ago, and it was actually on specific antennas. And so mm -hmm. kind of a segue into from what we were talking today with Dave is we're okay. going to take a deeper dive look in how some of those antennas actually work. Mm -hmm. And we've got an amazing guest who's coming on next week, and we don't usually have webinars back to back, do we, Tawny? We do not. It just so happens it falls that way for the first of the year. Mm -hmm. and, and I know this guest here, a lot of you know that is coming up and I got to give him a little bit of a plug. Um, and Tawny, who is that guest? Uh, we are going to have Dennis Burrell from Ventive back with us going a little more in depth looking at uh, how they come up with some stuff. They're going to share some real world examples and simulation and testing. So it's going to be really, really exciting. Uh, you know, we did have a lot of questions, folks specifically asking about antennas and we held off on that on purpose because we are going to take a look at some of that next week. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so make sure you register for that. Um, folks, thanks for listening with us. Thanks for joining us. We, we always appreciate it and, and we genuinely love the interaction. So thank you uh, everybody. And with that, Enjoy the rest of your day.